This game is stressing me out. I mean, totally. Somebody's trying to comfort me while I watch the game. Jerry can't handle me watching the game. I yell too much and he goes upstairs and he gets really nervous. But Max, Maxie, Maxie. Hey, boo. Hey, Maxie. Roll Tide, y'all. All right, Fiberistas, so I wanted to talk today about um, an analogy for Alabama football and making art. <laughs> so, okay, first of all, let me back up by saying I haven't always been an Alabama fan. I mean, I, I uh, went to school uh, about 45 minutes away from, from Tuscaloosa, so we would spend our weekends um, in Tuscaloosa. I had a boyfriend who was in a band and, and did sound for a couple of bars on the strip. And so I spent a lot of weekends in Tuscaloosa, especially since the little college that I went to was pretty dead on the weekends. Anyway, so, um, you know, I, if I was going to choose between Auburn and Alabama, which is a thing in Alabama overall, um, the, you're either an Auburn fan or an Alabama fan, and it's just a cultural thing. You know, I wasn't a, really a football fan until I moved to basketball country. And once Facebook came around, watching the games was something that I did with my friends from Alabama um, that we could do collectively. And a lot of us don't live in Alabama anymore, so it's kind of a way to reconnect. And we watch the game and comment on each other's posts and... Just stuff like that. So it's just kind of a neat way to bond with my friends. The last couple of years, it's been really fun watching Alabama because they're a really good team. I mean, yes, it does get kind of um, boring. And I say that with a grain of salt, just because um, they, they're they really good and they blow away a lot of the teams. The score points are usually pretty big. And this playoff game was one of the first games that really was a thrill and to be honest I think um, Georgia should have won that game I mean to be perfectly honest they played an excellent game and Alabama really wasn't on point they didn't play their best game Maxie what are you doing buddy Alabama wasn't really playing their best I mean they were making a lot of fumbly mistakes the head quarterback was was uh had you know some injuries and and he wasn't playing his best really he kept getting sacked and that was like messing up with his knee and his ankle so it was pretty rough they knew how to play an exemplary game and they pulled that out in the, the last quarter and that's why they won so anyway but if you were to look at the overall game I think Georgia played a better game and I really hate that they lost well okay I don't really hate that they lost but but I mean Honestly, they probably deserve to win. Okay, so back to the analogy. So, um, Alabama football. The thing that I love about Coach Saban and Alabama football is the way that he coaches his team. Um, they, they play a clean game, or so I think. Maybe I'm biased. 
Um, but he always keeps them focused on the teamwork. He kind of coaches them to work together as a team and not to try and stand out in a star status. Jalen Hurts. He was the reason why Alabama won this playoff game. And he used to be the, the, the big quarterback until last year when the freshman... Uh, Tua Taya blah, 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 I can't pronounce his name. Anyway, so Tua came along and, and won that championship against Georgia um, in the bowl game in January. And, and they put him as the starting quarterback for this year, and Jalen took, you know, was the number two quarterback. Most football players might have taken pride in that and, and gone somewhere else. But Jalen kind of stuck with it because it wasn't about him. It was about the team. And he could have transferred to somewhere else or had, you know, gone on to, you know, play. I guess he could have gone on to play professional ball. I think he was a senior. I'm not sure. Anyway, so he could have done that, but he didn't. He stuck with the program and became a better ball player. And he just, he just did the work and just stuck with it. And his chance came when when he had to 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 step up as part of that team and bring what he had to the game in a way i see that a lot of times as at with art i know this is going to sound like a stretch but bear with me and and maybe i was just reaching for content for today anyway but you know when you think about it i mean a lot of times there's a lot of risks involved when you're when you're making art and sometimes you know things don't work out and and in a way it feels like you're having your ass handed to to you you know you can go down a path with you know with working up an idea and it just doesn't pan out and you have to back backtrack and either learn some new skills um get real about what's not working and and it can be humbling but you get you can't get too complacent in in those methods. I mean, you have to be kind of constantly bettering yourself and in, in innovating to reach that next level. So in a way, I think that's that's what we saw in this past weekend's game. And it wasn't that he had gotten complacent. It's just that the bar was raised and you know, by a different quarterback, and he chose to stick around to better his skills. And I think that just really shows some really great character. So the same can hold true with an artist. You know, don't, it's, it's, you know, there's, there are times when you feel like a rock star and there are times when you feel like you're being humbled and it's just part of it. And it's just part of growing and growing your work. So, so that's my advice for the day. And that's my stretch for an, an analogy between Alabama football and art. All right, Fiberistas, that's day four. Day four of Vlogmas, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.